Vikings. Hockenheim. Hello and welcome to my preview of the German Grand Prix at the new Hockenheim. I call it the new Hockenheim because the old one, which was used over 30 times, has now been supplanted by this revised version, which uses part of the old circuit, but leaves a lot of it out. It's still very interesting indeed. I'm going to be talking to you about that. I'm also going to be talking to you about the chap who could win the World Championship this year. And then we're going to have a look at the Castrol rankings. But first of all, here's some news. Red Bull's Mark Webber is well and truly back on track after his spectacular crash in Valencia. The Aussie claimed his third win of the season at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, closely followed by McLaren's Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes' Nico Rosberg in third. It wasn't such good news for Webber's teammate Sebastian Vettel, who ended up having his worst finish of the season so far. However, he's putting that all behind him and looking forward to getting out in front of his home crowd at this weekend's Grand Prix in Hockenheim. It's definitely something special and... Uh... I wouldn't say pressure, I would say you know, it, it is an extra bit of motivation and probably then you find this extra tenth or hopefully you find it going around the track, so I'm very looking forward to it. It seems there could be another former F1 world champion to follow Michael Schumacher's lead and come out of retirement. If all goes well with Durango's bid for the 13th spot on next year's grid, Jacques Villeneuve could not only be behind the wheel again, but also be involved in the whole project. The Hockenheim circuit is near Frankfurt in Germany, obviously, and it was originally about 4.2 miles long. And basically there was what they called an arena section. And then it plunged off into thick, thick forest. But for all sorts of reasons, primarily to shorten the circuit and get more spectators in, Hockenheim was dramatically changed. It's now been changed from 4.2 miles long to some 2.8 miles long and it includes the previous arena section and a new section which cuts straight through where the forest was to join up with the arena. So now let's take a closer look. It may be one of the flattest circuits, but it's one of the best, situated in the Rhine Valley. It is, of course, Hockenheim. So here we go. The start and finish straight leads into a sharp right turn, the Nord Curver, a bit like Cops at Silverstone. Fourth gear, 211 k's an hour, and we build up to 310, the second fastest part of the circuit, as we slam on the brakes for turn two. Just 93 clicks, winding right, and then left through turn four and onto the Parabolica. It's long, gentle, fast, and left. Minimum downforce here as we head at around 300 k's through turn 5 and build up to around 3.30 before the hairpin at turn 6. Just 60 kilometres an hour in first gear and always some good overtaking opportunities here. Now it's power on and up to almost 300 again through turn 7, a slight right. More braking for the slow left, turn 8, just 100 clicks and then on through turns 9 and 10. Hockenheim is a great combination of fast sections with little need for downforce and slower bends where the aero really counts. So the cars are a challenge to set up perfectly and the tyres really take a bashing. Now we're into the motodrome. There are stands all round this area, great views for the spectators and this is a section which can really mess up your lap if you're not careful. Get the speed on around turn 17 and you're flying down the start and finish straight. Well, he's uh, an Australian driver. He drives a Red Bull and in my opinion, he's, he's probably one of the best. He wants to win that title and yeah, he's willing to put his body on the line and, and risk his life. Uh, I think he's going to win the championship this year and I think he's the best. I have a gigantic admiration and respect for Mark Webber. He's fought his way up through British Formula 3, he won the Formula Ford Championship, uh, then he drove for Mercedes-Benz in sports cars and had a dreadful experience when his car looped the loop not once but twice at about 200 miles an hour and he got away with it. And he's had good times and he's had bad times in Formula 1. The atmosphere in Australia when in a Minardi Mark Webber finished in fifth place at Melbourne, was unbelievable. And since then, of course, he's been with Williams, 
and he's now with Red Bull, and he's getting on a bit as far as Formula One drivers are concerned. Well, now Mark is really showing what he's made of. Victories this year, very much in contention for the World Championship, which he could win in 2010. And wouldn't that be wonderful if he did? Australia's third world champion. Let's see where Mark is in the Castro rankings. Well, Red Bull's Mark Webber has dropped a place this week. That's despite his win at the British Grand Prix. Current F1 world champion Jensen Button is continuing to regain lost ground and is now back up to sixth place after falling as low as ninth a few weeks ago. Fernando Alonso has moved into the top ten for the first time into ninth place and Sebastian Vettel has retained his number one spot for the 17th week in a row. Hockenheim is the scene of a change of attitude of the German nation towards Formula One racing. That's because of one man. Michael Schumacher, the national hero. He's made Formula One as far as Germany is concerned. And of course, he's had victories there for Ferrari. And he's going to be back this year for Mercedes-Benz. They'll be really turning out.